Hey guys, I'm Bryson with Trick Tools here, and we have Victor with us from Ice Engine Works. We're gonna be working on a pretty cool project uh, today to show you guys how to use their nominal pipe series of modeling blocks to build a custom turbo manifold. So, uh, Victor's gonna help walk us through the steps on how to make this happen. Uh, we're gonna be using uh, cast pipe elbows, and uh, Victor, if you could explain to us a little bit about the materials we're gonna be using and maybe the difference between what nominal pipe is uh, to tubing sizes so yes thank you for having us over so mainly um, for uh, us ice engine works we've been developing tools to uh, design and fabricate exhaust systems we started with uh, headers for naturally aspirated engines and now we're switching to uh, turbo manifolds uh, that generally use a different type of material so I wanted first of all uh, Bryson, Bryson to make a difference between the material um, normally for natural aspirated engines, we use uh, tubing, which is typically called thin wall tubing, uh, which is a straight tube just bent um, on a bending shoe. And that's very different from what we're gonna use for the nominal pipe series, which is uh, uh, what is typically called uh, pipe elbows. These are um, measured in a system called uh, NPS, nominal pipe size, um, which means it does not reflect, the, the size does not reflect the actual measurement. This is very important because in the case of tubing, if this is one three quarters uh, specification, it will measure one three quarters like this one. But if this one is, this is in this case, this is a one and a half NPS, it actually measures 1.9 inches. And this is very important because what we want is um, people not to get confused, especially when ordering parts uh, that it, it um, it doesn't come up uh, what they expect uh, simply by being uh, bigger or smaller. So again, in this case, this is one and a half uh, nominal pipe, but it measures uh, close to 1.9 inches. Um, in the case of uh, this uh, project, uh, particularly we're gonna work on, we're gonna use an LS mock-up engine. LS engines happen to have uh, round exhaust ports which must facilitates the, uh, the initial installation. Uh, so 1.9 is very close to 1.78 uh, tubing. So we're using actually 1.78 flange that we just opened up a little bit to be able to fit the, uh, the tubes inside. So other than that, um, I think we're ready to, to work this project. Um, yeah. So, so uh, in order to build this, we're gonna be using the Ice Engine Works modeling blocks. So, uh, Victor, I don't know if you want to step over here, maybe explain to us a little bit about the, the modeling kits uh, and what may be included uh, in the different, uh, different kits from there. Yes. So what we've done here is, uh, first of all, we have uh, took a lot of notes when we designed this thing about how people in general develop uh, their turbo manifolds, uh, the systems, uh, I mean, the type of materials that are available. And essentially, it's only two sizes uh, for bends. Um, this is very different to what happens with tubing. With tubing, in general, if you are able to machine or develop a bending shoe, you can bend the tube at any radius that you want. Uh, and that's sometimes a challenge. But in the case of nominal pipe, there's only two uh, standards, uh, uh, the two sizes that are standard. And this is global. This is worldwide, which is a great benefit. The first one, the super tight elbow, this is um, specified as 1D, one times the diameter, that's the centerline radius. And that, in this case, it really applies to the uh, nominal size. So this radius here will measure one and a half inches, which is super tight. You will never be able to do this on tubing because simply the tubing, it will be stretched too much and it will break, it will crack. In the case of these, the way these are manufactured, it allows a perfectly smooth um, wall thickness all around, which makes them ideal for turbocharged uh, applications. So this one is called uh, uh, short radius, it's 1D, um, and this is called a long radius, which equivalent, is equivalent to one and a half diameters. So again, one and a half diameters times the diameter, which is one and a half, um, will give you uh, a measurement of two and a quarter uh, centerline radius. So two and a quarter centerline radius, one and a half centerline radius. So what we did when we developed our system, we created three different shapes, which are the ones we're showing here. The first shape is the straight, the second shape is the short radius, and the third shape is the long radius. So we have, for the, long, for the straight sections, we have two sizes of blocks. We have a block that is one inch exactly at the center line, and then we have another one 
that is um, half an inch, and we call this a trimmer. It just simply allows you to create, g you know, fill in gaps when you're actually modeling. We'll see that later. And they just click together. This is exactly one and a half inches uh, uh, in length. So those are the first two shapes. The second shape applies to the short radius. And um, what we've done in the NP series is something new um, for the industry, we hope, and it's going to be a game changer. Because traditionally, the challenge of building a Toro manifold is routing the whole thing, which we'll uh, you know, be doing here. But in, in its complications, sometimes w what ends up happening, we lose track of certain important features like length. Um, or how to build it, or the welding sequence. So what we've done is create two shapes that are um, essentially, one addresses a main uh, idea, which is just degrees. Uh, so we have one block that is 30 degrees, uh, and then we can create a perfect 90 with it. it will be exactly the same part. Now the fact that it's made out of three parts, it means that we can make this modular. So in an, in, in an advanced mode uh, for using this system that we'll explain later, we can technically use only 90 degree bends or we can create uh, multiples of 30 degrees in between. Uh, I can create a 120 degree bend simply by creating two of these together and then just trimming them or cutting them where it, it, it tells me. So this gives us an, an additional uh, design freedom that was not available before. So that's the first part. The second option on this same block is, this is the game changer in the industry we think, is a block that is exactly one inch in the center line. This allows us to create equal length runners for turbo manifolds that was not possible before because simply there were too many things to, to keep track of. Now we can do it. Of course, the angle is very different than any 30. It's, I mean, you can work the math on that. But essentially, what I know is that in this section, I have three inches in the imaginary center line, which is the line that the flow will see. The flow, when it travels inside a pipe, takes the profile of a bullet. The fastest moving point is at the center. So the closer you get to the walls, the more friction there is, so you're dragging. So that's, what, that's the measurement that we actually becomes relevant in terms of calculations when you're actually estimating uh, tuning points and resonance points on an exhaust system. So for us, it's, it was very critical to create this option. This is the advanced mode. Uh, so if somebody wants to get super creative and very you know, um, ambitious about creating a certified equal length turbo manifold that will help the impeller uh, pick up speed because it will have the pulsations will be timed exactly this is the way to go. And again, th before this, there was no way of doing this properly. Um, finally, the third size applies to the long radius, which is, in this case, we have three different shapes. We have a 30 degree. We have a 30 degree, pl uh, actually, no, this is not a one. This is the 30 degree. And uh, so again, just to prove that we have three times 30 is 90. We have a perfect 90 there. In the case of the uh, long radius, because it's more useful and very flexible, we also created a 15 degree bend. So we can create 45s, 75s, anything in between. It exists in all multiple. Um, so we have 30 degrees here. We can click a replace here and still conserve our overall 90 degree. And then, of course, uh, we're also matching the uh, other uh, idea of equal length. So we also have a block that is exactly one inch at the imaginary center line. Of course, all the blocks are marked uh, on the side exactly, uh, you know, the series they belong to and the center line radius. So with this, we can literally create anything we want uh, on that design. And that's really what we encourage uh, our users to be able to determine before starting with the project what is going to be the criteria of the project. It could be 
maximum performance where you already have a pre-established length on the runners that we want to use, or it could be cost, you know, where you want to create something that just doesn't take 40 hours, it takes 15 hours to build, uh, that has the least amount of wells, the least amount of cuts. So there are so many ways to, to, to address the project based on your needs, you know, again, mm -hmm. cost, time, performance, uh, show, you know, you want to, uh, uh, you know, um, show off your welding abilities. Well, you can create something really complex, but everything will be within the, I mean, the, the tool will be able to accommodate all those needs and be able to walk you through the whole thing. And that's the goal that we have for this. All right, so we've opened up the modeling kit. We've got the blocks all laid out here. Uh, we're ready to start uh, modeling up here. Uh, Victor, why don't you explain to us a little bit about uh, what else is in the kit as far as the instructions and then the other sheets you have. Okay, so the kit includes obviously blocks. It also comes with a, a leaflet of uh, instructions. It's a manual, it's not a leaflet, it's actually a booklet. It explains um, the whole philosophy behind it. It also explains how to work the system. And very important, it includes the um, uh, instructions uh, how to work the different modes as we talked earlier from a simple design mode, uh, which essentially entails just using uh, the pipes as they come, not modifying anything about them, only connecting them with straights. That's the easiest way to, to use the system. Um, the next level would be the advanced design, where we actually start not just cutting straights, but also cutting uh, different, creating different angles out of 90s. Uh, and finally, the advanced, uh, the super advanced mode, which we call uh, equal length mode. That's the one where we use only blocks for, um, you know, for uh, that are uh, one inch in uh, the center line. Mm. And then we're definitely modifying the the, the pipes uh, elbows uh, heavily. So. There's also an instruction on how to cut it, and uh, obviously welding. Welding is just, you know, goes back to standard welding practices. Um, we don't really touch much on that. Um, this is also included. It's a pad of 25 pages of what we call a control sheet. This is really the brains of the whole project. This thing. Once we create our model, not only will tell you um, what we need uh, as far as building it in terms of materials, but also you can keep track of how many cuts and how many wells we need to develop. And this is key important because it's super important because uh, uh, an elbow naturally has a cost, but also does a, uh, a cut and a weld. If we have too many cuts, too many wells, no matter how much we save on, a, on an elbow, it will put us on a, on a difficult position. So we want to maximize and make it be as efficient, not only in the material, but also in our labor. Mm. This will allow us to control that. Once we have a certain shape, we will very easily analyze it based on all these key markings on the blocks. We will able to create uh, you know, the, the, the specific control sheet for this project. And then we will be able to evaluate if it's a go or, or not. If it's too complicated, too expensive, Maybe we need to break it and do it again or find another different way. This is really the power of this system. Um, it allows you to explore without really committing other than time and is not really even an expense <coughs> because for every time you're actually playing with the blocks, we are learning, we are acquiring new ways of doing it and, and becoming better at it. So yeah. we've seen almost miraculous um, improvements with with many clients uh the difference between their first project to the fourth project is night and day that in other ways would have taken years and untold amount of, of scrap so anyway let's jump jump on that and start your yeah so first. just just as a recap uh to recap basically uh essentially the whole point of the kit really is to be able to build and model your header uh, or manifold and then map it out uh, before you even buy materials that way uh, you can tell exactly what materials they need, order exactly what you need. You're not wasting material at that point, and you can just be buying per job, uh, per project, uh, exactly what you need in materials uh, to be able to uh, maximize your profit and uh, really get the most out of uh, the project that you're working on. So um, yeah, at this point we can uh, start, start modeling it up. And exactly. Uh, the whole goal is to remove uncertainty. Uh, so let's, uh, as I said, let's pick a point and then start uh, working it out.
uh, this is 30, 30, 30. Okay, so these are all 30 degrees. So this creates a, this creates a natural 90. So what we're trying to do or trying to avoid is to have as many breaks in the line. Every time there's a break in the arrow line that, that, that is created when connecting several of these blocks, we, we have to make a cut and a weld. When the line is the same, all this is essentially one plane. It sits flat, just like this. We'll show you guys that up, up close uh, with a picture, but there are arrows on these blocks that when those are lined up, uh, that's when you know that it's gonna match the plane of your material. So you get, keep those lined up, and like you said, any, anywhere that those arrows are broken, that's where you're gonna have to have a cut and a weld uh, in your part, so. Exactly, so we're trying to avoid that. You know, a design like this, it will take you know more cuts, more wells. Uh, probably, if we go back and redesign or reinvest another five minutes in our model, we can get rid of uh, you know uh, extra wells. So, with that in mind, we're going to try to connect as many of these as possible and minimize the um, the work. Uh, so, let's uh, pick on. Um, I would suggest in this case uh, coiling. The rear one, the one that is closer to the collector, is not really a problem. The problem, the, the one that always determines the length is obviously the one that's mm -hmm. farthest because the there's no way we can shorten it. So let's just try that. And what I would recommend is, you know, we try to come out and then tucking it in so that we leave a lot, of, a lot of room for the other ones and we don't start taking room away that might have interference with other stuff. Mm. So on that, my personal style is to actually create a, a runner without really anchoring it first. I just play with it, I just create a length, and I'm just essentially trying it, testing it until I feel confident. Then I put this thing on and then lock it in and then move on to the next. Okay. So you're gonna give it a shot to that, um, Bryson, maybe just getting yeah. getting creative. Um, while you do that, I will talk a little bit about some of the uh, things that we recommend as far as exhaust design. If we think about what's happening in the engine, obviously we're creating explosions inside a combustion chamber at a controlled rate. Uh, those explosions obviously create the exhaust gases that we need to evacuate and eventually put on a turbo uh, to extract some of that energy. Um, but this temp the, the temperature of those explosions is pretty high. Typical in the turbo, we'll be running around 1,100 degrees or even higher, depending on the application, depending on the load. Um, but this all, what it creates is um, a, a, a situation where we have to, uh, again, take advantage of that energy that we're packing in there and be able to use it the best way possible to transfer it to the turbo as, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So we're trying to minimize any losses of that energy in that flow of gases or spent gases. So what we recommend is if you need to make all you know tight bends, start with them at the beginning. Um, and the reason is, again, we're packing a lot of energy at the beginning. It's a lot easier to give up a little bit of that energy in making a tight turn than it is to make a tight turn at the end where the flow, as it comes out, it will have a high temperature, it will be very, uh, with very low density, it will be moving very fast as a gas, but as it moves down, it starts cooling. Of course, it doesn't cool drastically, but it will lose, you know, 50, 100, 200 degrees, depending on the application um, of temperature. That creates, on a, you know, ideal gas equation, if it's easy to calculate that the gas will become more condensed, it will become heavier to move or to be pushed. So we want to keep the gas as hot as possible, uh, without making it lose uh, energy through tight bends as much as possible. So a sleek design is, pro is very much uh, recommended. Um, we also want to conserve heat. We also want to make a, a design that is tight so that it doesn't give out that much heat uh, away because, again, giving out heat will create the gas, um, will make it l uh, lose temperature, obviously, and create uh, a, a, a more condensed volume and it will slow down. We want a fast moving gas that is as hot as we can, we can get it. So, um, what do you think? I think it's close, but. There you go. So that's. Gotta get the right angles. Exactly. For, well, remember you, for every, for every change in plane, you have a funny angle that you can play with. Every time you mm -hmm. rotate it, it, it shoots the, uh, the end to a different location. So yeah. 
what that means is that you have actually four different adjustment points that can make it happen you know while you already got there exactly we can twist this and it'll move this way we can twist yeah. this other section will move this way so this is when we mean that you need to explore the space because and this is what happens in our brains the more you use this the more you will start thinking in terms of how the blocks behave you're very close right there very close so maybe exactly there you go you read my mind i feel like i need this to come down a little more We have seen uh, some projects uh, with uh, some of our clients who actually label the bags, you know, with the bigger numbers. I admit that the numbers are not as big as they could be, and this is a limitation on the manufacturing process. Um, simply just to have a quick reach at a bag. That's where you probably use your trimmer. Yeah. Yep. Keep in mind, uh, Bryson, that this is as much as we're trying to make this, pro this process um, as easy as possible, we're still humans and the cutting will be made by a human, the welding. So there's a lot of leeway, which actually we can take you know, and, and use it to our advantage. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Um, there's a lot of uh, ways uh, or a, a lot of aspects in the process that will allow us to close any, any funny gaps mm -hmm. or make up for any, any uh, uh, inaccuracies. I think that's very, very good right there. Yeah, it gives you plenty of room to be able to come out the yep. outside with these. And, uh, yep. and, and as we pointed out, we're getting a relatively sharp turn. And then as we, as we move uh, closer to the collector, we're starting to pick up a more of a straight line. So we are allowing the gas to use its energy to move instead of bouncing against the wall or making a tight turn. Gotcha. So yeah. So then. So then let's just you know place this thing and then lock that one in. Okay. And. Um, All right, so we have uh, a whole manifold here modeled up with the uh, NPS series. So now we're going to show you guys what it takes to uh, convert each one of the primaries uh, to uh, actual parts. So uh, we're going to be working with uh, this main tube here. So, uh, Victor, if you give us a little bit of explanation on uh, what the next step is. Okay. So what uh, Bryson has done here, he's worked actually the stage one of our system, which is the modeling and the, des the design. So before going to stage two, which is turning this into metal by uh, cutting and trimming these uh, parts, 
we're going to analyze this first so we can create our, our project document, which is our, our control sheets. This is what's going to tell us how many of these we need to do, uh, how much work is involved into recreating this part into metal. So the first thing we have to make sure is, uh, we're going to start with this one. So we're going to make sure that first of all, all these curves uh, are as we intended. And in this case, Bryson intended to make this a single part. So we're going to make sure that the arrows on the um, top of the blocks are, are lined up. And of course, that the blocks belong to the same center line radius, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. So uh, from doing that, we follow this line and we make sure it's good. And then we follow the next curve. This is also good. It's all lined up until here. And then this one as well. So we should be fine. On the straights, obviously it doesn't matter. So what this, from a quick analysis, what this means is we have a, a, stretch, a straight section. We're gonna have a cut and a weld. We have an elbow here, a cut and a weld. Actually, not a cut, just a weld. A, 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 a section, a straight uh, part, also cut and weld here. And then we're gonna tack 290 degrees here and then add another straight section before we do this. If we were doing this in tubing using a U-bend, essentially it's the same idea except that we have, we have the U-bend on just to, yeah, there you go, thank you. If we were doing th this in tubing, for example, we would have this part would be first one section up to here. It would come out of a, a partial section like this. And then we have the next section all the way to here on another with another U-bend and then another section that would go all the way. So this is the way we try to optimize to the least amount of, 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 cu of cuts and welds. So the first thing, we're gonna start filling out the uh, control sheet for this uh, specific uh, project. Um, we recommend that uh, we uh, label or name each cylinder by a number so that we don't get it mixed up. In this case, I would recommend doing this as cylinder one, two, three, and four. So the first one we're gonna do is cylinder four. So anything, any section on it will, will start with a number four. And then the sections themselves, I like to call them by letters. So we got a 4A, a 4B, 4C section anyway, um, and so on. So on the first one, um, what we're going to do is fill out these uh, forms to represent exactly the partial sections of the whole runner. We have two different um, radius, uh, short and long, and then we have within each one, we have two different modes. So you got to make sure that you're using which mode you're using. In this case, uh, Bryson chose to use uh, degrees, so we're going to use the 30 degree block. The other one is a one inch long for equal length. We're not using that, obviously, because we're using full angles that will always round up to 180s or 90s. In the case of the uh, inch long blocks, because of the weird angles to be able to guarantee equal length, we end up with funny, funny angles. So let's start, we're gonna start filling out this section, 30 degrees. So our first um, section to cut, we're gonna add what we already added, which is the starter tube, which is half an inch long to the first inch. So we get a, the first section is a total of one and a half inches long. So we're gonna go to our first uh, space. Uh, we're essentially gonna block one inch. The long lines are one inch. The half lines are represent um, half inch long. So we have one inch and half inch. So we're gonna go up to here. Uh, we like to color these also to not get too mixed up with uh, different uh, numbers by the time this starts getting crowded. So all this is section 4A. Um, And we also like to mark the flow of the gas because this is important. Uh, by the time you have a lot of these filled out, um, they're gonna look very much the same and we're gonna find a way to differentiate the way we're gonna weld them. It's very easy to get confused and weld it backwards or, or, or upside down. So just for the sake of uh, completeness, we're gonna call, put a flow direction on this part even though it's straight and it doesn't matter. So we got the first one knocked out. The second one is a, is a perfect 90 because we're using full degrees. So we don't really have to cut these. We just go to a, just to choose a full 90. And but here again, let's make sure because we're using, this is a long radius. 
So we're gonna have to use the long radius 30 degrees. So we're gonna use this guy. So that's 90 degrees worth of that. This whole section will be our section 4B. And again, it doesn't make a difference in this case, but it's always good to have this practice of putting a flow direction. So we're now this far. Now the next one is one, two, three inches of straight. I can use this same part already, uh, the same leg. Actually, any leg can be used because these are separate. So we have one, two, and three. We're going to go to way to here. And we have three inches here. You can use crayons, you can use highlighters to do this. So this is 4C, and again, direction doesn't matter, but we still want to make sure we have the discipline to do it always. The next section is at 90, and then another 90, that's a full 180. So for that, we're going to use... And these are the these are actually the, the short radius right here. Those are short radius. This that's a good radius. catch. Very good. Yep. All right, thank you for that. So we move on to... Short radius, 30 degree, and we have the 180s. So we have two of these guys. So this is going to be for the, and again, it's all symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. And finally, we have one, two. So in this case, uh, Bryson ran out of straight blocks. We we're not using the equivalent of two and a half to make one. So we have one, two, three, four, five inches. We can pick any leg because again, they're separate. So um, let's just choose, and I don't think we have enough. So this one, two, three, four, we're on another one. And this whole thing. This is four E and it's five inches long. And then finally, we have this one that is... 30 degrees, and then 15. 30 and so 15, 45. so we got 45. With a, we got a half inch of straight, but we need a little bit extra uh, based on the collector placement. Okay, so. and that's a long radius, right? Correct. Okay, so a long radius, 45 degree. So let's pick another color. So we have, this is 45 degrees to here. So for F, and this is worth 45 degrees. Yep. And then the little extra is, this, there's no straight, right? It's just simply- yeah, Well, there's a half inch of straight and then okay. probably another- We're gonna estimate that to so. three quarters if we need yep. to. In these cases, what we, we're gonna suggest later on in the tacking is that we cut this part and then we tack this section that can be easier, easily, more easily trimmed uh, yep. in a band. Mm -hmm. um, so the last part will be, let's just call it three quarters. Um, and again, this is the trimming that is necessary because simply we're trying to be as exact as possible, but not perfect. Mm -hmm. FG. So from this, the idea that you, you, we do this to follow all, all of them, you know, we create uh, as many pages as we require, and what this will start telling us is that for every color section, we can determine how many of these we will need. Mm -hmm. And then in the case, for example, on, the, on, on this one, that is a full, you know, full 90 degree parts, we don't need to cut anything to, on, on them. So all we need is uh, connections or, or uh, welds. Mm -hmm. But we do have on the straights, we will have cuts. For every state we have one cut, we have another cut here, because we will be sectioning these. So again, uh, we can, from here we will estimate the number of parts. So in this case, we need, on the short radius, we need one, two, we need two elbows. Those will have a cost. Then the long radius, we will have one, and then this is a, this is a, mm -hmm. So we'll have the equivalent of two. It's one and a half, really, but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll buy two. And then we'll have on the straight, we'll have one and a half, a little bit more than a half, so let's just make it a whole inch, two and a half. 
and then we have three that's five and a half and then we have five that's ten so that's around twelve let's just say twelve inches or one foot of straight again that's another cost then we can get into how many cuts do we need to make we know we have to make one cut here one cut there another one here another one there so that's four and then another one here so that's five cuts five cuts that also have a cost and then finally how many wells this first section is one but we're gonna have to make a well here to the flange so that's one then we have another well here two three four five six seven eight nine so we need nine wells and again this has a cost so the whole point of doing this exercise that took us literally four minutes to analyze this thing is coming up with a final cost for the whole thing and here we will evaluate if the amount of investment in parts is is, is reasonable if the number of cuts is not too crazy if the number of wells is not too crazy if it's any of these we don't like then we can go back and redesign or rearrange it to try to minimize or reduce this number. That's really what is tremendously powerful for these things because in the past we used to do this by hand using real material and it would take us three or four hours to get to this point. And if we didn't like it, we had to start all over again. Now, as I said, in a matter of minutes, we can do the, you know go through this exercise and determine if this is a go or we need to redo it. So. Uh, at this point, we're ready to start uh, ordering parts and starting to work. So let's get the parts and get moving. So we got the, uh, out of this design, we got the most complex part, which is recreating this 45 with a leg already. So again, uh, Bryson used extra spare uh, blocks to create this part, so we don't have to take that apart. So this is how we're going to start substituting each of these sections. So we go back to, with our first part, we go back to our control sheet, and we now get rid of two parts. We got this part, which is uh, 4F and 4E. So these are gone. Now, it is advisable to uh, mark what these parts are again just to make sure because by the time we have all of them there will be a lot of them that look alike and it's very easy to, to mix them up so this will be 4F and this is 4E now this can be all you know wiped later with acetone or whatever um, sometimes people choose to put it inside whatever but at least we know that these two parts are knocked out so now we can move on to the easy ones which are more straights, we have a 90, we, we don't need to do anything to, and that's a long radius, so we got, let's just do this one right now. This is 4B, and again this is, we, I mean, yeah, we cross it out, and now we need to do 4C, 4G, which are the straights, and then we, used to, we need to do a 180 using two uh, short radius. Now we have all the parts, uh, Bryson just completed tacking this. So we're gonna do a quick inventory. We have 4F, 4E already there. We have 4B, then we have 4G, which is the thin one, 4G. And then we move on to 4A, which is this one. And then or C and I'm forgetting to cross this out here so this is done this is done and then finally 4D which is the, the, the 180 okay so now we're in a position to start actually replacing and then building these things but very quickly just to show the precision of these 
we have that equivalent we have this part we have now this one here so literally also almost by magic the whole manifold is starting just evolving in front of us so we uh we start now attacking uh so we're going to be substituting section by section um obviously we because we have a little bit of a gap here that needs to be trimmed i suggest we're going to start with the uh, the solid part that is easier to control so uh what we're going to do is remove these um, break the tack so we can now substitute it with the actual equivalent section and uh i'm sorry that's not that one it's this one and to make it an easier so we don't have to fumble with another joint i would suggest that we tack this together so we bring this whole thing together and we also tack yeah that's straight either to here or to there it doesn't really matter so the less parts we need to fumble with the easier it is to do the tack welding because now we only have to deal with only one mo motion Well, we finished uh, tacking all of this stainless material together uh, to complete the first primary tube. And as you can see, uh, it's a pretty close resemblance to what the blocks uh, represented to start with. So what do you think, Victor? In your words, what do you think? I mean, a lot of corrections, a lot of uh, hiccups to fix. I don't think so. I think no, it's pretty it's straightforward. Very straightforward. You know, yeah. the fact that you ended up with this what well, we can call scrap, but it's not scrap, it's leftovers. This might be scrap, but this is a perfectly usable uh, yeah. angle that can be pretty much tacked to a straight and then be used again in any of the future uh, or any other of the, of the upcoming uh, runners. So I think it's pretty much, you just showed essentially the whole process. What is left over is now repeating the same uh, steps through the other three runners yep. and then after that is just following uh, you know, standard welding procedures for manifolds which would entail um, breaking the tacks, welding this on the side and then bringing them back once they're all welded so you don't have to be you know playing with uh, different positions on the welder and then that's it you know um, working your welding sequence in other words yep, but other than that I think that's pretty much that's it I mean it's, yeah. it's as simple as that I think the goal is uh, we accomplished it, is just to simplify a process that otherwise would look impossible. And we've done it, um, as I like to tell people, very calm, very relaxed. We're not throwing wrenches to the wall. We're not using bad language, foul language, because simply we are just enjoying the process, you know? Correct, yep. Well, if you're interested in the NP series of Ice Engine Works products, uh, give us a call, visit the website at tricktools.com, and we can answer any further questions you might have. And uh, hopefully you get to, uh, enjoy the pleasure of getting to build a set of headers or turbo manifolds, something like that. So um, again, check out our, our website, give us a call and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on high performance tools for the fabricator.